Chapter 12 There was a car fire outside Will's apartment the next morning, and construction workers watched the black smoke from a safe distance. He hesitated, then walked quickly down the sidewalk and past the car, heard the sirens, saw the black smoke wisp out the wheel hollow, then turned into the alley not to look back. This was the west side, Chicago's California Avenue, and the sun hit him out on the open road and flashed off the polished chrome of the fire engine on its way. What's the matter ran through his head. The body and blood of desire and time release fleshed through the hourglass. He considered it a dirty trick as he waited on a low, flat couch with his back to a barbershop window for a middle-aged Puerto Rican man to axe the broken ends and recite with pride the story of his son's passage through kung fu belts. A young barber on break in the back of the room picked on a Spanish guitar, gentle rolling tunes, and well. Will kept promising himself, I won't go back, no, I won't. Yet there he would stop, the imbalance confronting him, and stand before his bathroom mirror, tall and proud, moved like MacArthur, let all sense down the drain to swear, I shall return. There were a few smiles in the early morning train. Many closed their eyes through stops, and some fell asleep. Everybody seemed to have been away from home for too long. Most had rural Midwest in their eyes, mineral passage without event or recognition or care. The crop of the city rose like fence stakes and formed a rough, uneven line. When seen at high speed, graffiti, the city pulse, colorful with the proliferation of a weed. Will sat there and smiled, relieved. Once he dedicated himself, once committed, his thoughts ran ahead to later solitude with a pen. He had too much faith in himself, worked for and against him.